Hello, I'm Chris Sanford. I don't know about you, but I'm a bit fussy about my beads when I'm fly tying. I've mentioned these before, I do like them, they're nymph head beads. Okay, there's all sorts of different colours and shapes and sizes, and each packet has a fly on the front of it. I'm particularly fond of this one. This is, um, these are the Mayfly brown beads in 1 8th, and the fly is Edberg's Caddis Lava. What do you think of that, Ian? It's a maggot. Do you mind? It's a caddis lava, says so on the packet. Maggot? How dare you. <clears throat> anyway, I'm going to tie it. <laughs> uh, I went um, onto the Flymen website in America. They're the people who produce the beads. They're uh, distributed over here by, I think it's Fulling Mill, and I bought mine from Fly Tying Boutique. Um, uh, he's very adventurous, is Phil Holding. He gets all sorts of new products in from all over the place. and. Uh, I look at his website often to see what he's got. It's a jolly good site. Uh, that's the end of that commercial, Phil. That'll be about three and six months, all right? Um, on the website, I saw how Edberg ties this, and he uses a product called Rainy's Round Rubber Legs. Large, okay? I searched all over the UK, couldn't find it, so I rang my mate, uh, Jim Maurice, in Nashville, Tennessee. I said, have you got any? He said, sure. And he sent me some over, bless him. If you ever go to Nashville, go to Fly South, his fishing shop. It is unbelievable. It's not really a shop. It's an emporium worth a visit. Um, so he sent me some over and I tried to tie it. And I thought, well, what's the point? If you can't get the product here, what are we going to do? And then I was in my local course fishing shop, which is Serbet and Angling. And I found this. Ta-da! It is Pole Fisher's Elastic. Garbolino's Pole Fisher's Elastic in size 0.8 mil number four. It's exactly the same latex product. So that's what we're using today. Um, I've started the fly already, as I usually do. Um, I've made a bump of thread and I've pushed the bead on, having put a little bit of super glue on the thread, and I've made the body out of virtual nymph dyneema. All right. Jolly good, nice strong thread. So let's reattach the thread here. back behind the bead, nib off the thread, and take our elastic. Now, this is a time-consuming and quite tricky operation, so take your time with it. Tie it in behind the bead using, um, leaving, I should say, a little tag of rubber, like that. Tie it down, going down the body, and as you get about halfway, stretch the material to keep the taper of the fly. We bring the thread back up the fly, park it behind the tag, get hold of the tag, pull it up, and with a bit of luck, it should slip back behind the wraps, and it has, hooray. Now, we need to get the thread out of the way for a minute, so we'll put it over there, excuse the squeak. Um, this is the tricky part, because you'll notice I haven't come very far down the fly. That is because the first wrap always, but always, slips down, and you have to pull it all the way forward to make it happen. OK, so let's give it a go. So we're going to pull forward, forward, all the way up the fly in touching turns. And as you get about halfway up, you can just ease off the pressure on the elastic to keep the taper of the body. Now, the most important thing here is to not to let go of the elastic, even when you're retrieving the thread, OK? <laughs> Wind the thread back up and secure the elastic underneath the bead, OK? Underneath the bead. One turn and another turn, nice and tight. And I always put a locking turn in front to hold it in position, make sure it really stays there, and give it a pull. OK, and now the same routine when you cut it off. Give it a pull, and with a bit of luck it'll nip back below the wraps. Yes! <laughs> Success, another couple there. And what we do now is do a couple of whip finishes to really secure it, and then add a little bit of varnish. So here we go. It's squeaking today, isn't it? Hello! <laughs> One, two, nice and tight, 
pull it up. And now, as we keep saying, it's not going anywhere, folks. The next step is to take a nice brown marker pen. There is no nicer brown marker pen than an Edding 143B. There it is. My problem is, this is the last one and they don't make them anymore. Has anybody out there got any old stock of Edding 143B marker pens? They do another brown, but it isn't the same. All right, that's the end of that commercial. If you've got any, look on my website, see my contacts, please be in touch, and I will rush at you with money. Okay, uh, now we put a big stripe down the back. I'm particularly pleased with this one. It doesn't always go as well as this. So let's hope I can mark it nicely. Oh. There we are. Cool. That's a good one. So there it is. Ed Berg's Caddis Lava. What do you think of that then, Ian? It's a maggot. You can't tell some people, you know. Tie it, try it, and catch a big one, and I'll catch you next time. Now, if you'd like to see a lot more flies, a lot more fun, and a lot more of my stuff, go to my website. It's at www.chrissanford.com.